A backup. Well done. Elementary. More Penn Station problems as an Amtrak train full of passengers gets stuck in the tunnel. We're live on the scene. Caught on camera, a New Jersey police officer facing disciplinary action after a violent encounter. And apartment hunting without a broker is just an app away. The Pix11 News at 5 starts right now. Live from Studio 2A in Pix Plaza, this is the Pix11 News at 5 with Kaidi Tong. The first work week of repairs at Penn Station went fairly smoothly, but on day six today, a major issue. A train full of passengers had to be rescued after stalling between the Hudson River tunnels and the station platform this morning. And now a second train is disabled. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kadi Chan. You're watching the Pix11 News at 5. Transit officials are looking into exactly what happened underground today, while rescue crews are currently trying to get the hundreds of passengers aboard that second train into the station safely. We have Pix 11's Miles Miller at uh, Penn Station working on the story for us. We're going to get to him as soon as we can. But first, let's take a look at our weather with Craig. Hi there, Craig. Hi there, Kaidi. And it is a very warm afternoon as well out there and um, not quite as humid as it was last week, but where we reached 84 in the city, 81 Newburgh, 85 in Toms River, 85 Islip. There's your normal for this time of year, 84. So it is quite warm. Fortunately, not too humid, as I said. And now there's a bit of a sea breeze that's developing along the coastal section. So Islip, West Hampton, Bridgeport, you just dropped down below the 80 degree mark. It's basically in the 70s. And there were a couple little tiny brief showers that popped up in parts of the Jersey Shore and over the North Shore of Long Island. I saw one was uh, as I was coming in a little bit uh, a little while ago, but you could see them here in the satellite picture, just little bits of clouds and every once in a while a brief scattered shower. They're drifting off to the east southeast. They'll be out of here. The sky will clear as we get on into the nighttime hours. And you could see that we have pretty decent weather to get you through your Sunday. So our evening planner now, we're talking about dropping through the 80s into the 70s as we go through the night. It's going to be a very mild night, but fortunately not oppressively humid. Not not just yet. And as we take a look at the headlines, hey, we've got this game coming up for you at 7 o'clock tonight, 6.30 pregame. Typical summer weather, warmth and humidity is back, and we'll let you know how long that lasts. Katie. Craig, thank you. Well, police have released surveillance video in connection with two sex attacks in Brooklyn. Police are looking for this guy. They say he sexually assaulted two women in Crown Heights overnight. Both attacks happened within 90 minutes of each other and a few blocks apart. Police say in both cases, this guy followed the women to their homes and tried to rape them. Both times, the women managed to fight him off. If you can help police ID this man in this video, call Crime Stoppers. And in Queens, the search for fourth and final suspect continues after a woman is sexually assaulted. Police have already arrested two teenagers and a 20-year-old man in connection with the case. The attack happened earlier this week when the 50-year-old woman was leaving church. Police say the men threatened her with a gun, robbed her, and forced her to perform sex acts. All three suspects are facing multiple charges, including sex abuse. Family and friends said their final goodbyes to a New York State trooper who was killed in the line of duty. 36-year-old trooper Joel Davis was gunned down Sunday night while responding to a domestic call. After yesterday's service, his body was transferred from a funeral home in Watertown, New York, to Fort Drum. The man accused of shooting him, Justin Walters, is also accused of killing his wife. He is currently being held without bail and is charged with murder and second-degree murder. At least three people are dead and 12 others are hurt after a fire ripped through a Honolulu high-rise. This fire began on the 26th floor yesterday. That's where officials say all three bodies were found. It then spread to the 28th floor of this 36-story apartment building. More than 100 firefighters battled this massive fire, and the blaze was mostly confined to that single section of the building that you see there. But hundreds of people had to be evacuated. Investigators are now looking for what caused this deadly fire.
All right, we want to go back now to our top story. Two disabled trains right now at Penn Station. They strand hundreds of passengers today. Prix 11's Miles Miller is there live for us outside Penn. Hi there, Miles. And we're here at Penn Station, and just minutes ago, a train was disabled here in the station. I want to show you what's going on here. We've got firefighters behind us, but in that room there, Amtrak police, along with the firefighters, are trying to figure out how to rescue the 600 people who are on that train. And we're told it's a New Jersey transit train, and it got stuck coming into the north tunnels of the station. It was uh, just a little bit earlier when we were here at Penn Station around 11 o'clock, and we saw another train get disabled. That was an Amtrak train, and people were on board that train as well, and they had to be rescued. The summer of hell at Penn Station was felt this afternoon when an Amtrak train from Miami to New York got stuck halfway into the station just before noon. 165 riders were on board. Firefighters and paramedics raced to the station, but no one was injured. Amtrak said electrical issues with overhead wires were to blame for the issue. They sent in a rescue train, which was towing that train to the station, but it got stuck by the same power issue. A second train was sent in, and passengers were freed around 1.15. Amtrak suspended service, and passengers like Rachel Chaplin were stranded. I own a small business in Connecticut and have like such a tight time frame that like it does, it makes a big impact. So definitely super challenging. All week, commuters have been bracing for the so-called summer of hell after Amtrak announced emergency track repair work that's expected to last until September. And complicating matters, this is a train without AC, again, a New Jersey transit train. We're waiting to learn more details from New Jersey Transit about what type of train this is, where it's coming from. Again, right before the summer of hell, there was a New Jersey transit train derailment in which there were 185 people on board. The issues are mitigated, are trying to be mitigated this summer. Uh, this is not part of that summer of hell repairment uh, issue. We have seen throughout the day issues with overhead wires here at Penn Station. We're looking to find find out if that is what is the cause of this issue with the north tunnels here at Penn Station. We'll have much more later on on Pix11.com and on the Pix11 app. Live at Penn Station this evening, Miles Miller, Pix11 News. Right, Miles. Let me just clarify. Are you saying that something like 600 people right now are stranded on that New Jersey transit train? We'll get back to him for more, an update on all of that going on. All right, right now, thousands of car enthusiasts are gathered in Brooklyn for the Formula E championship races. It's the first time New York City has ever hosted an electric car race of this kind. Pace Lovins' Jennifer Bizram was in the middle of it all today. She has more from Red Hook. Eco-friendly cars that can go from zero to 60 in three to four seconds are racing in Red Hook. We've got great events here. Uh, we have the all-electric racing series on the track. These cars are doing 140 miles per hour using the latest electric technology in the world. It's the first time fast cars with electric engines are competing in New York City. Electric cars? It's, it's the future, right? And it's quiet. I've never walked up to a race where you can't hear the yeah, cars screaming from miles away. Tens of thousands are expected to turn out before the weekend is over, including kids. I like cars. The cars, which are known to give off no pollution and a limited amount of sound, will race on a one-mile track that zips around Pier 11 and the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal. Oh, it's just a completely different experience that we're here for the first time to experience and take part of. I want to see how this compares to, um, to other form of racing. I'm a very big Formula One fan. And, and these things are pretty quick, so don't have quite the noise that, you know, maybe we might want, but definitely want to see the comparison, how they do, and yeah, very excited to see what it's like. Families attending the two-day event can also enjoy the food carts, simulators, and concept cars. So this is the iPace concept. It'll, um, it debuted at the LA Auto Show last year. And we're going to be introducing the production version in about a year from now. While many were for the big Formula E championship coming to Brooklyn, cyclists were disappointed about street closures in the area. But overall, many say the event is good for the borough and the city. This is genuinely history in the making. There's never been anything like this within the five boroughs of New York City. So if you didn't get a chance to come out here today and take part in this event, you still have some time. There's one more race that's taking place tomorrow. It starts at 1 o'clock. And get this, there are still some tickets available. In Red Hook, Brooklyn, Jennifer Bisram, PIX11 News.
was known as an accomplished musician who also performed at the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Well, rapper Schoolboy Q took a flight with his dog and ended up with somebody else's pet. This poor little pooch is finally back with its owner after getting separated. United Airlines says it accidentally flew him to the wrong city during a layover. The rapper arrived at his destination to find somebody else's dog. As you can imagine, he was furious that this happened and he plans on suing the airline. The beer strike on Long Island is finally over after nearly three months. Long Island's largest beer distributor voted to approve a new contract. Clara Rose workers will be back to work tomorrow. They've been on strike since the end of April. This comes after the company pulled out of its pension plan and cut wages by 30 percent. Under this new contract, Clara Rose will continue making contributions to the workers' pension plan. The wages will also be well above its April offer. Union employees will ratify the agreement today. Well, the battle to repeal and replace Obamacare is reaching a critical point with the vote happening next week. Senate leadership is scrambling to get enough votes. Right now, the Senate cannot afford to lose another vote. Just one more no will send Republicans back to the drawing board. President Trump doubled down in his weekly address. He says this plan provides much needed flexibility to create better health care options with lower premiums. The Obamacare repeal and replace plan would significantly reduce the federal deficit. So it would be good for the federal government. It'll cost you less money by a lot, and it'll be a much better plan. You can't do better than that. Well, governors from both parties are denouncing the Senate repeal bill. It's now a race to get this measure passed before the summer break. Jimmy Carter is back to business as usual again after a health scare in Canada. The former president collapsed while working on a Habitat for Humanity project. He was treated for dehydration and was taken to the hospital for observation as a precaution. He's said to be doing okay now. That's good news. Carter and his wife returned back to the site to thank volunteers. Well, my, uh, my bringing attention to this Habitat project was completely unintentional. And I, I apologize to all of you for having gotten a weak moment yesterday, but I, I got through fine. Carter also told the crowd to stay hydrated and to keep on building. All right, coming up in the News at 5, hip-hop was born in the Bronx, but it flourished in Brooklyn. And the borough is putting the beats on the street this weekend. Plus, President Trump is teeing off about tax troubles at his golf properties. Why he's going to court. Then, would you like to avoid paying a 15% broker's fee when renting your next apartment? Now there's an app for that. Stay with us. When you're New York's very own, you move at the speed of New York. You're everywhere. Weekdays, it's a new day on the Pix11 Morning News. Betty Wynn, Dan Manorino, Byron Miranda, and Marissa Torres are ready to jumpstart your day. So when you walk out your door, you're on top of the story, ahead of the curve, ready for anything. Join the new Pix11 Morning News crew. Weekdays 5 to 9. We're New York's very own. The 2017 Nissan Rogue beat RAV4 to become America's best-selling SUV by being the best. Rogue features Nissan's best safety technologies, better cargo room, the best views, and features RAV4 could only hope for. Sorry, RAV4. Guess that's why Nissan Rogue is America's best-selling SUV. Get to your local Nissan dealer today and lease the Rogue family starting at $159 per month or get $2,000 Conquest cash on Rogue. Bass Pro Shops, it's more than a store. It's local tips and advice from the good folks right here in Bridgeport. It's a low price guarantee. And free events that are fun for the whole family. With thousands of quality pre-owned vehicles and exceptional customer service, head to your neighborhood enterprise car sales and let the people who buy more vehicles than anyone flip your thinking about buying your next one. Pix11 News, sponsored by Enterprise Car Sales. Haggle-free buying, worry-free ownership.
The 13th annual hip hop music festival is finishing strong on its last day. The finale concert is going on right now at Brooklyn Bridge Park, along with several other events. Headlining this year's festival are hip hop legends Rakim, DMX, and The Locks. This festival has grown into a week long celebration of Brooklyn's unique contributions to hip hop culture. Well, Columbia University has settled a lawsuit filed by a former student who was accused of rape by another student who became famous for carrying a mattress around campus to protest the school's lack of action. The young man who was accused, Paul Nunsegger, said he was discriminated against by the school after this widely publicized incident. Emma Sokowitz became known as the mattress girl after she carried one around to protest the school's dismissal of her allegations. No evidence of rape was found. President Trump is at his golf course in Bedminster, New Jersey this weekend, where he's attending the U.S. Women's Open Golf Tournament. Bedminster is just one of 12 golf resorts that Trump owns in the United States, and he's waging a war in the courts over how much tax he owes on them. Trump National Golf Club, Jupiter, a 285-acre luxury state-of-the-art property, good enough for the president to host Japan's prime minister, later golfing on the lush course. In federal election filings just last month, the Trump Organization claims its value is more than $50 million. But in a lawsuit filed Thursday against Palm Beach County, Trump's attorneys argue it's worth far less than what the county assessed, $18.4 million. In 2014, Trump's lawyers claimed it's worth no more than $5 million. Why? If you lower the value, you pay less taxes. This is a years-long pattern repeated practically every year. Public records show Trump has fought the tax assessments on all 12 of his U.S. golf courses except the one in Bedminster, New Jersey, where he gets a farmland tax break for having goats on the property. The Trump Organization is also suing the town of Ossining to lower his taxes on his Westchester golf course. Touting a 101-foot waterfall at the 13th hole, Trump National claims it's the most expensive golf hole ever constructed. In campaign filings, Trump says the course is worth more than $50 million. But in 2015, his attorneys argued the course was worth far less, only $1.35 million. The tax difference between those two values is about $425,000 a year. I just think it's so unfair. I mean, who is going to be paying the difference except for the people of Austin? Trump's lawyers are also fighting the people of Rancho Palos Verdes south of Los Angeles, home to another luxury golf resort. Public tax documents show in 2007 that course was worth $67 million. But year after year, Trump filed hundreds of appeals to drop the value of the golf course by tens of millions of dollars. All those appeals have dropped the value to $27.7 million, down $40 million in nine years. And President Trump has still not released his income tax returns to the public, despite vowing to during the campaign. All right, a massive sinkhole in Florida appears to have finally stopped expanding. This all started yesterday morning when an entire house collapsed right into the hole. Then another home and a boat also swallowed up. Officials estimate the sinkhole is 250 feet deep, and they say it's not draining because of debris. Residents in the area are currently not allowed to return home. Power was shut off as a precaution. It's since been restored. Nobody was hurt. Officials say cleanup, though, could take months. And firefighters in Southern California are still battling a massive wildfire that has been raging for almost a week now. Look at this. This massive fire has burned more than 13,000 acres so far. Nearly 3,000 people have been evacuated. The fire started on July 8th, and fire officials say only 52% of it has been contained. Firefighters uh, suffered heat-related injuries, but they have all returned to work. But boy, do they have their work cut out for them. Can you believe that, Craig? I can. What it's, they're dealing with yeah, out there. And, and the weather is definitely not helping because here are some of the temperatures, high temperatures currently going on across the West where it's above 100, generally 100 to 110 degrees. And now look at the relative humidity. 10 to 15 percent. That is just not a good combination to try to fight firefighter, uh, fires. So 83 as we come back home now, 79 in uh, Sussex, 81 in Montgomery, 82 Tom's River. There was a brief little shower down the Jersey Shore just a little while ago. Sea breezes have started across the island and over the Sound and into Connecticut, so it's in the 70s now if you work your way east uh, near the water. And you can see little bits of clouds dotted around the region. They're all going to die out as we go on in 
into the evening hours now, and we take it back into the center of the nation, well, the Ohio Valley, let's say, and you see that there's not very much in the way of cloudiness. In other words, it is going to be nice and bright and sunny again tomorrow, quite warm, maybe just a little drier. Here's a quick look now at uh, Futurecast, and there's your clear sky heading into tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, through tomorrow evening. Ah, but then after that, Monday morning, clouds are coming up, showers are approaching the area, and Monday afternoon, we could see some showers or thunderstorms starting to show up. But tomorrow, it's a very warm, summery day, moderately humid, I guess that's the best way to put it, in the uh, mid to upper 80s, mid 80s, and the humidity is definitely back on Monday, and you know what? It's back through the seven-day forecast, too. We'll show you that coming up. Cutty. Oh, that sounds good. Thank you, Craig. You know, there's this new website out there designed to help people find apartments in the big city, and it works by cutting brokers out of the deal. But when a program leaves real estate agents behind, there's bound to be backlash. PIX 11's Narmeen Chaudhry has details on this. Friends for years, Vianney Brandecourt and Julia Ramsey had their fair share of rental horror stories. Living in New York City, as you can imagine, isn't easy. And what makes it particularly challenging is finding a perfect home that won't break the bank. I, uh, I remember being shocked when I moved back to New York about the, you know, the broker's fee. I was around 25 and I had to like call my mom and ask for like basically like a loan in order to cover, you know, the first first month, second month's rent and then like the, the actual broker's fees. That sticker shock is what Brandecork and Ramsey wanted to change. A couple of years ago, I actually just found an apartment through a friend of a friend and, you know, obviously it was much more economical. I didn't have to pay any fees, but also it just felt like a very, you know, like human personal experience. So came the idea for joinery.nyc, where you can find a home from a fellow renter and cut out the broker altogether. Instead, an incoming tenant pays the departing tenant a fee capped at 5%, an amount the site claims is three times cheaper than a typical broker's fee. That's why, like, we started this, was to give, um, you know, renters just more choice. Like, you should be able to choose a more affordable option, or if you really want some hand-holding, then you might want to pay the 15%. Narmeen Choudhury, PIX11 News. All right, still to come on the PIX11 News at 5, we are back on the scene at Penn Station where 600 commuters are stranded right now on a disabled train in a tunnel. Plus, a New Jersey police officer is facing disciplinary action after this violent encounter was caught on camera. And smokers in Nevada are out of marijuana, and officials are declaring it an emergency. We have details straight ahead. The Yankees trying to bounce back after blowing it in Boston last night. Plus, Venus goes for her sixth title at the All England Club. Your highlights are coming up in sports. Stay with us. This golden opportunity features silicon, microprocessors, and code. Raw elements transformed into innovation by Lexus. Experience advanced safety technology at the Lexus Golden Opportunity sales event before it ends. Lease the 2017 NX Turbo all-wheel drive for $299 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. This summer, in a place where flavor runs deep, any dish and every glass might be the best you've ever tasted. As long as you don't forget your appetite. New York State, it's all here, it's only here. Plan your trip to the Finger Lakes at iloveny.com. Come to Sesame Place before little kids become big kids. Before dress up turns to makeup and tag becomes hashtag. Before furry hugs become first loves. Come to the only place that makes little hearts race. Save $10 on admission and get a free second visit only at sesamePlace.com. Sesame Place. Go before they grow. Fios is not cable. We're a 100% fiber optic network. 
And with the new Fios Gigabit connection, you get our fastest internet ever. With download speeds up to 940 megs, 20 times faster than most people have. Switch to Fios Gigabit connection with TV and phone for $79.99 a month online for the first year. Plus HBO for one year and multi-room DVR service for two years, all with a two-year agreement. And switching has never been easier. Get out of your contract with up to a $500 credit to help cover your early termination fee. Go to FiosGigabit.com. Cool. Introducing the QX60 from Infinity. Lease the all-wheel drive Infinity QX60 for $439 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. Pix11 News, sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Furnishing your style. The pot business booming in Colorado after the state reached an impressive milestone in May. And that's because marijuana sales topped $100 million for the 12th consecutive month. The state earned more than a billion dollars in sales between May 2016 and 2017. During that time, Colorado pulled in more than $230 million in taxes and license fees. And while we're on the topic of pot, Nevada is still dealing with a supply shortage, though. This all comes from the state legalized recreational marijuana on July 1st. The problem is that there aren't enough distributors to supply Nevada's 47 dispensaries. The governor recently declared a state of emergency. To help ease this shortage, it would allow the department to consider more applicants for distribution licenses. All right, still to come on the News at 5, we're back on the scene at Penn Station where 600 commuters are stranded on a disabled train stuck in a tunnel. We'll have a live report for you next. Plus, Donald Trump seems to get his opinions about Paris from his friend Jim. But who is this Jim exactly? We're investigating. Then, a bridal company is stepping up to ease some wedding woes for women who have found themselves without that all-important dress. How do you show up? Do you just bring it? Or do you bring it all? Focus. We gotta go. Third row, like a pro. Current lessees switch to GMC and get this low mileage lease on this 2017 GMC Acadia SLE1 for around $249 per month. We are professional grade GMC. Hey, nice job clearing the clog. Thanks. Do you know anybody who could repair the water damage in my basement? Roto-Rooter does that. Do you guys fix water heaters? Roto-Rooter does that. How about a leaky faucet? We do that. Disposal repair? We do that. I've got to run a few errands, but if you could finish up those pies, that'd be great. Thanks. And away go troubles down the drain. Pies? Okay. No. Text blades to Gillette On Demand. Text to reorder blades and get $3 off your first order with Gillette On Demand. I'm your Venus. The smoother the skin, the more comfortable you are in it. So find a Venus Smooth that contours to curves, flexes for comfort, and has a disposable made for you. Skin Smoothing Venus Razors. I never truly understood the power of therapy until I started using Talkspace. Face-to-face -face appointments never worked out for me. Thank you to my therapist. Join more than 500,000 people who already text their therapist wherever they go for only $32 a week. Join now and get $35 off. Talkspace, therapy for how we live today. Provident Loan Society is the only not-for-profit pawnbroker in the United States. We lend cash against gold and diamond jewelry, fine watches, and silverware for about half the cost of commercial pawnbrokers. If you or a family member are active in the military, you may be eligible for special rates. Call us, visit us, or apply online at ProvidentLoan.com. You've been there for us. Now we're here for you. Thank you for your service. 
Live from Studio 2A in Pix Plaza, you're watching the Pix 11 News at 5 with Kaidi Tong. Welcome back to the Pix 11 News at 5. We return now to our top story. Hundreds and hundreds of passengers are stranded right now in a tunnel at Penn Station, and this is the second such incident of a disabled train just today. Pix 11's Miles Miller is live on the scene for us with the very latest details. Miles, what do you have? Sure, and all those passengers have now been freed from the tunnel. It all happened on track eight. It was a New Jersey transit train, and we're told by fire officials that 600 people were on board that train with no AC when, because of a power issue with Amtrak's overhead uh, power lines, uh, something went wrong with that, and that's the reason why they were stranded inside the tunnel. Firefighters went inside, paramedics went inside just to make sure that those passengers were okay. That train was towed by a rescue train on track eight. Everybody was let out and let go safely. This is, of course, the second time an incident like this has happened today. Just earlier, around 11 o'clock, about 100, 100 plus people on an Amtrak train from Miami to New York. You can imagine what a Miami to New York train is like already. But then, couple that with no power, no AC, having to be rescued. It took two hours for that to happen. And uh, when they did, uh, the rescue train was stuck because of that power issue as well. They had to bring in a second rescue train and rescue those people. So a very tough day for travel for passengers here. And this week, we didn't see many issues with travel here at Penn Station. The so-called summer of hell issues were mitigated by the LIRR and New Jersey Transit contingency plans. But leave it to the weekend, uh, a time when there's work not being done at Penn Station for there to be issues on the rails. We're live at Penn Station. Miles Miller, PIX11 News. Miles, how long were the people on the New Jersey Transit train stuck in the tunnel? Was it a couple hours or less? It, no, it was a blip. Uh, we were about to go live about 4.50 when we saw the firefighters rushing into the train station. So, uh, and then you factor in our, our live shot last time was about 10 minutes ago, 10 minutes. Uh, so about 20 to 30 minutes they were stuck on that train. Uh, and New Jersey Transit immediately alerted riders uh, through social media saying that uh, the trains would be running on or close to schedule and then a 20 minute delay and then back to on or close to schedule. So they weren't on that train very long. They got that rescue train in there pretty quickly. Well, that's good to know. Miles, thank you for that. All right, a tense afternoon in New Jersey after an angry swarm of bees attacked the homeowner and his wife who had the hive on their property. Pixelon is McGee Hickey, law for us in Ramsey, where the oh-so-delicate operation is underway right now. McGee. Well, Kaidi, uh, police are asking everyone to stay far away from the house because it's still a dangerous situation. So I am listening to them. We are a block and a half away. The police chief himself was stung in the forehead because he went too close to the house. Now, this after a husband and wife homeowner team got stung by a swarm of bees and they were rushed to the hospital. These two blocks of Martis Avenue and Ramsey have been closed down until beekeepers and Ramsey police can contain what they believe may be thousands of angry bees on the attack. Ramsey police got a call just before 1 p.m. that a homeowner who had a hive on his property had been attacked by his own swarm of bees. We got a call of a, uh, a man down in the driveway, unconscious but breathing, with multiple bee stings. So the officers came out to check on him. And once they came out, they were unable to get to him because of the amount of bees that were in the back. It was later discovered that in the backyard there was actually a hive that was being um, kept. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously either disturbed at some point and attacked the homeowners. Right. And the wife also went to the hospital? The wife did. The wife tried to aid her husband, and it ended up, you know, her ended up also going to the hospital. So what do you do with very aggressive bees? Um, it's sort of unusual for them to be that aggressive. Beekeepers, completely covered from head to toe and armed with smokers and sugar, are trying to carefully remove the hives on the far side of the house from here. The home where the beehives are located is right opposite a playground in a heavily residential area where neighbors are being told to stay indoors with the windows closed until they know it's safe to come out again. Have you known that your neighbors have these bees that could get loose and attack people? Well, I've known they've had bees. Whether or not I've thought of them getting loose and attacking people, probably not. I saw it as a hobby. 
Uh, police on the scene say that the couple is in their 60s, the couple that was stung by the bees. They are still being evaluated at the uh, Valley Hospital, so we don't know their condition yet. And we still don't know what made the bees so angry. We're being told the bees have been here for years, so we're not quite sure what stirred them up today. But as I say, we are keeping our distance. And one of the bee experts said bees especially like the color yellow, so I am really keeping my distance. We are live in Ramsey, New Jersey. McGee Hickey, PIX11 News. Back to you, Kitey. Go several more blocks away. Okay, McGee, take care. All right, newly obtained dash cam video shows a New Jersey police officer beating on a teenager. You can see he climbs onto the 16-year-old and starts throwing big punches. This goes on for more than a minute. This incident took place back in May in Carteret, New Jersey. Officials say the teenager had led police on a chase after being stopped for driving without a license before crashing his car. Well, now that officer has been charged with official misconduct. The department suspended him without pay. Pending his trial, he's due back in court at the end of the month. Organizers behind the Women's March on Washington back at it again, this time to protest the National Rifle Association. Hundreds of protesters marched 18 miles from the NRA headquarters all the way to the Department of Justice. This is day two of the demonstrations. The rallies come amid high tensions after the NRA, NRA released a controversial recruitment video. The March's co-president was on CNN earlier this week saying this ad is, quote, a direct endorsement of violence. When the NRA is responsible for gun owners, people who have the ability to take lives, they should be doing nothing more than speaking about de-escalation, safety. A spokesperson for the NRA defended the video and who the message was for. All right, let's talk more about this lovely weekend weather we're having. It's a great, warm summer weekend, right? It is. It is warm, not too humid. Let's say moderately humid. But before I get off this shot, though, I just want you to look over here into the upper right corner. There is a pop-up shower. We had one down along the Jersey Shore, and it's just an isolated case, but it sure looks like it out to the north and northeast of the city. All right, Central Park got to 84. Newark was the warm spot at 88 today, and you can see all temperatures, 80 to 85, basically, well, mid-80s, except for Bridgeport. The wind was off the sound all day. Now we're looking due east. Across the East River, it's 83, humidity 49%, northwest wind at 9 miles per hour. 84 for lower Manhattan, 82 in the Bronx. This is where you might see a brief shower over the next, let's say, 15, 20 minutes or so. Otherwise, it is still in the mid-80s out there. Look at the water temperatures here. Boy, did they make a recovery. It was so cold in May and early June, and all this warmth has certainly helped bring those water temperatures up. 81, 81 in Belmar right now. And you can see little pop-up, little tiny showers, and I do mean really isolated. And after that goes by all this day south. This is what we're in for the next day or so. Sunday is just going to be so nice and warm and not too humid. You can see that high pressure moves in. It's mostly sunny. And by the time we get to Monday, though, there could be an isolated thunderstorm. And the same holds true for Tuesday. It is a very typical summery week coming up. Partly cloudy for tonight, near or just under the 70 degree mark in the city. There's your range for the suburbs. If you're headed to the beach for tomorrow, it is going to be 79 to 85 with water, 75 as we said, and the UV index is very high. Air temperature, mid 80s for most of the area, nice and warm. And there's the seven day forecast. Look at that, another week of daytime highs in the 80s to around or even a little over 90. And starting Monday, the humidity comes back, too. Kitey. Thank you. The Trump administration is asking the Supreme Court to clarify its ruling on the president's travel ban. Justices ruled the ban does not apply to travelers who have a close family relationship with somebody already in the country. But what does that really mean? A federal judge ruled Thursday that not allowing grandparents but allowing spouses does not make sense. The Justice Department wants the high court to spell out all the specifics. Well, speaking of travel, President Trump has just gotten back from being the guest of honor at France's Bastille Day military parade. The newly elected president of France invited the Trump family to help mark the 100th anniversary of American troops arriving in France in World War I. But for all the pomp and circumstance, noticeably absent from the president's trip to Paris was his old friend Jim. And one big question tonight remains, just who is this mysterious Jim?
I have a friend. It all started on the campaign trail. And I said, Jim, let me ask you a question. How's Paris doing? Paris? I don't go there anymore. Paris is no longer Paris. Donald Trump kept talking about a friend named Jim, who he said no longer goes to Paris, a city Jim once loved, because he no longer feels safe there. How's Every he chance he got... He goes, where? France. He said, I'm not going to France. President France Trump invoked his pal no Jim. Longer. I have a friend. He's a very, very substantial guy. Okay, Mr. President. Jim is a very, very substantial guy. We get it. But who the heck is he? Why doesn't he have a last name? Why won't the White House comment? This has led to a flurry of speculation about who this mysterious guy Jim really is. Jim Dolan? Jim Neighbors? Jim Beam? Nope. Just plain Jim. So, does this guy Jim even exist? Or is he Trump's imaginary friend? Just someone Donald made up. Kind of like the fake PR person using the name John Miller, who used to call up New York tabloids with news about the Donald in the 80s. What's your name again? John Miller. And you work with Donald? Yes, that's correct. It was pretty common knowledge at the time that that was Trump himself pretending to be someone else. Trump denied this, but audio experts begged to differ. I can conclude uh, with a fair degree of scientific certainty that it is Donald Trump's voice. In any case, all this talk about his friend Jim traveled all the way to France with the president this week, though not in person, leading to this curious moment at a news conference in Paris when a French journalist actually asked... You've mentioned a friend, Jim. Uh, we told you that Paris is no longer Paris. You better let me answer that one first. That's a beauty. It's going to be just fine because you have a great president. You better do a good job, please. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to make me look very bad. <laughs> and you're always welcome. Hmm. What is clearly not so welcome? This very, very long <laughs> think about all this. Well, at this hour, we haven't been able to identify him for comment. All right, another news. A bridal chain is stepping up after retailer Alfredo Angelo shuts down all across the country. Many brides unable to pick up their ordered wedding dresses, and they're scrambling to find new ones. The chain unexpectedly shut down its 60 stores and is reportedly filing for bankruptcy. While David's Bridal is now offering help to anyone left jilted, all brides have to do is bring an Alfred Angelo receipt, and they will get a discount, hopefully in time for the wedding, right? An Indiana woman who planned to get married this weekend, hi there, has called off her wedding. And now she's spending the day, like, uh, inviting the homeless to her reception. 25-year-old Sarah Cummins spent years, apparently, saving up for the $30,000 event since she was unable to get a refund. She decided to invite 150 residents from nearby homeless shelters. They're going to dine on the planned menu for dessert. There's going to be wedding cake. Afterwards, Cummins will head to the Dominican Republic on her own for the honeymoon she would have had, but I think this is all probably for the better. Maybe she can go with Jim. Yeah, there you go. There's an idea. If we can find Jim, figure out who he is. All right, what, what do you have? Oh, it's me. Still so come on the News at 5. We're hanging out with Russell Simmons for a great cause. And if you really want to impress your friends, there is an app that allows you to change the color of the lights on Midtown skyscrapers. I want that app. We'll explain how it works. And Joe is here. She just saw. Yeah, I was just talking with Jim about the Yankees trying to put their bullpen woes behind them as they look to even the series with the Red Sox. Plus, Venus tries to take home another title at Wimbledon. It's all coming up in sports. Stay with us. I'm Marvin Scott. Sunday morning on Pixel 11 News Close Up. A look back 40 years to the night the lights went out and threw New York into turmoil. I said to Bell, my wife, oh, oh, the lights are out, and I think there's going to be hell to pay tonight. It was a night to remember, but could it happen again? We'll hear from Con Ed. Plus, the summer from hell, the MTA crisis. We'll hear from a state senator who's up in arms over the state's failure to act before the situation derailed off the tracks. Join us, record us, Sunday morning at 6. And for you late risers, catch us at 11 a.m. on Facebook.com slash Pix11 News. I remember a time when we all had a home. But now the greed of your world brings violence to ours. Families are destroyed and time is running out. We stand on a line that separates hope from despair and life from death. 96 elephants are killed in Africa every day for their ivory. You can make it stop. 
Protect their home. Go to 96elephants.org. <sighs> no bars. Oh, no. Looks like somebody needs a new network. When I got this unlimited plan, they told me they were all the same. They're not. Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. It's basically made for places like this. Honey, what if it was just us out here? Right. So I ordered you a car. Thank you. You don't want to be out here at night because of the coyotes. Okay, thanks, bud. Bye. Be nice to have your car for some shelter. Bye. When it really, really matters, you need the best network and the best unlimited. Just $45 per line for four lines. Something special is only happening here. College tuition is now free at New York State Public Colleges for full-time students from middle-class families. So now more people can afford an education. With this investment in our future workforce, we're opening doors of opportunity for students and businesses. Only in New York State. Learn more at esd.ny.gov. The Ford Summer Sales Event is on. I'll jump out and guide you back. Easy, son. This is going to blow your mind. Whoa. Awesome. That is really cool. Take on Summer Right 225. Only at your local Ford store. Why would you go out of your way and wander around a warehouse for paint when you can just swing by your local Ace? Ace has top-rated paint like Valspar, can match any color, and mixes it with something that's hard to find. Award-winning service. Because the way we see it, if anyone is going to go out of their way... It should be us. It's the Ace Extra Mile promise. If it ever takes more than one trip to complete your paint project, we'll bring you what you need, and delivery is free. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Anxious to get to you. Yeah, all about the Yankees. <laughs> yes. Really, those questions about their bullpen. They're trying to bounce back after a devastating loss against the Red Sox last night in Boston when Araldis Chapman walked in the winning run with the bases loaded. New York now four and a half games behind the Red Sox coming into today. Louis Severino taking on Boston's ace, Chris Sale, in this one. Severino got into some trouble in the third. Bases loaded for Mitch Moreland. He lines it to center, an easy sack fly as Mookie Betts comes home to score, and the Red Sox took the one-zip lead. Next batter up, though, Hanley Ramirez. He lines to third to end the inning as Severino minimizes the damage. Just one run. Right now, it's 1-0 Boston in the sixth. Mets off to a fast start out of the All-Star break last night, pounding out 19 hits against the Rockies at City Field. Already up 2-1 in the third, the Amazons exploded for six runs in the inning to take an 8-1 lead. Michael Conforto had a big night for New York, 2-4 for four with a home run and 4 RBI. And Jacob deGrom, well, he did his part for the Mets, pitching eight strong innings, giving up just one earned run with 11 strikeouts as the Mets roll 14-2 the final. I want to be out there as long as I can. I want to pitch into the ninth inning. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough in these past few to stay out there for a while. Pitching with a lead is nice. Um, but, like I said before, I just try to go out there and put up zeros no matter what the score is. And tonight you can catch game two of the series right here on Picks 11. Tyler Chatwood taking on Seth Lugo pregame at 6.30. Game coverage starts at 7 p.m. At the All England Club this morning, the women's final, Venus Williams facing Garbina Muguruza. Williams trying to win her sixth Wimbledon title. And Muguruza trying to become the first woman to beat both Williams sisters in a Grand Slam final. She beat Serena at last year's French Open. Early on, Venus up to the challenge. Comes through with the forehand winner. And it looked like Venus was about to take the first set easily, but not so fast. Wow. Muguruza overcomes two set points. Williams' return eventually into the net. She, Muguruza takes the first set 7-5. All downhill from there for Venus. Muguruza, 14 years younger, blanked her in the second set. Venus's return is ruled out. That's it. Muguruza wins 7-5, 6 love. It's her first Wimbledon title. I had, I think, the hardest match today you know, against Venus. She's such an incredible player. I grew up watching her play, so it's incredible to play the final. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but uh, that afterwards, must have been something else. Yeah. I know, to play against your idol and then I, to beat them, amazing. Wow. But Venus, class act, didn't yes. blame age, didn't blame anything going else on in her life. She just tipped her cap to her opponent there.
That's the right way to handle yep, it. Class uh, act. Yes, absolutely. Takes nothing away from her. She's, she's For sure. a class act. Thank you, though, Joe. There is a new app that lets you control the lights at the top of two New York City skyscrapers, but you've probably never heard of it. That's because it's a big secret, and you have to be invited to download it. Pixelman's Andrew Ramos managed to break into the inner circle. Take a look. Ladies, I just, uh, I think I'm gonna have to call heaven because God's missing two angels. Oh, wow. It's pretty safe to say pickup lines do less picking up and more creeping out, a memo I apparently missed. These days, if you're trying to impress a stranger, how about the allure of Midtown's skyscraper lights? Yes, this is a thing. This blue, 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 blue. <laughs> It's an exclusive app called Spireworks, and it literally puts the spire in your hands. A subtle tap on your phone to the color of your choosing changes the spire lights atop two midtown buildings, one Bryant Park and four Times Square. Right there. It's, a, it's an experience. Uh, people have shared the experience with others around them different ways. Um, gender reveals, engagements, uh, magic tricks. The Spireworks experience is one that is limited. Only 10,000 people in the world have access, and you need to be invited by another app user in order to flip the switch. When they go to control the lights, there's the possibility that up to five other people will concurrently control it with them. But if there's more than five people, you will end up with like a queue. You'll have to wait a little bit. Access to the spires is possible on most days after sunset and before 2 a.m., a period when most are out and about in the Big Apple. Some single men who have access to the app are reportedly using it to impress women in an effort to pick them up, an outcome that doesn't surprise the app's developer, Mark Domino. It's not surprising given, given New York's nightlife and the number of rooftop venues that have popped up in the past couple of years. I encourage you to, to think more creatively because I think this... This is going to be one that more men and women have heard of and will probably be less effective in picking people up. While many will have their own agenda, the Durst organization, which owns and operates both buildings, hope that down the road they can enable the app with social and charitable benefits. In Midtown, I'm Andrew Ramos, Fix 11 News. That's kind of cool, right? I'll be right back. See the new Midnight Edition. Blacked out alloy wheels, spoilers, outside mirrors, and more. Take on the mainstream. Be nine per month. It's not carbonation. Those bubbles are celebrating. Right now, get one dollar any size soft drink only at McDonald's. Right now, get any small McDonald's smoothie, frappe, or shake for two dollars. How do you top a deal like that? Hurry in, only at McDonald's. This summer, journey into the Adirondacks, where campers carve through stone, and to the Thousand Islands, where kids can be kings. If you like big adventure, you will love New York State. It's all here. It's only here. Plan your summer getaway at iloveny.com. Fios is not cable. We're a 100% fiber optic network. And with the new Fios Gigabit connection, you get our fastest internet ever. With download speeds up to 940 megs, 20 times faster than most people have. Switch to Fios Gigabit connection with TV and phone for $79.99 a month online for the first year. Plus HBO for one year and multi-room DVR service for two years, all with a two-year agreement. And switching has never been easier. Get out of your contract with up to a $500 credit to help cover your early termination fee. Go to FiosGigabit.com. This summer, people are experiencing all the excitement Chevy has to offer. Oh boy, I'm looking straight up. Holy smokes. I can't tell I'm throwing anything. Wow, that's the jam right there. <laughs> go for thrilling drives and deals at the Chevy Summer Drive. I want to go to a Chevy dealership right when I get home. <laughs> it's the Chevy Summer Drive. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Cruze for around $169 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. PIX11 News, sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Furnishing your style. 
Every year, the multi-talented Russell Simmons hosts a benefit called Art for Life. This year's theme is Midnight at the Oasis. Any moment now, this benefit is going to kick off in the Hamptons. Simmons himself stopped by for a quick chat about this great cause with PIX11's Ojanika Obiekwe, who, from what we understand, has changed her last name since the interview. Oh, and we heard she made him curse a lot. Yoga is a set of tools. When you sit down with Russell Simmons, you're guaranteed to walk away with a few words of wisdom. You know, scripture gives us these tools that move you towards what they call Christ consciousness. You know, that you read that on my Instagram. So. <laughs> So I write books on that's what's in some of it's in Happy Big. It, it is, always, yeah. and it was in Success Through Stillness. Yeah. So it's you, did you read Super Rich? That's the book you should read. I think read. I did. I I have a feeling. You must read a lot. No, not really. I only read, I only read your books. I can't even read. I have to learn how to read because of you. <laughs> Whenever you bring out a book, I forget this that I. <laughs> you see it saying, "Oh my God!" She's like, at first it was like a little, and you're like, you know, she <laughs> me, but that's nice. But then 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 she said, "I only learned to read because of you." Yeah. But on to the main event his annual Art for Life benefit in the Hamptons. This year, it's special for me because it's very music friendly. Chuck D is our honoree. And the programs, we underwrite art education for inner city kids, which and they need it the most. I mean, they're the ones who the city has locked out. I mean, when it comes to underserved communities especially, they pulled all the art programs and it's really critical that they get to practice and appreciate art, so. Okay. You know how they say seeing is believing? I've seen, I believe. Thank you. I'm, I'm being serious. You're adopted, by the way. Oh my God! <laughs> can you say it again? I don't know if Eddie was rolling. Yeah, you're officially. adopted. <laughs> can I can I still go by my last name, or do I do O.G. Obiakwe Simmons? Well, it's your your choice now. It's you, my choice. Yeah, you can have both if you like. Thank you, Dad. O.G. Always having fun. If you can't make it to the Hamptons tonight, there is an online auction component this year, and you can find that information on our website, Pix11.com. Well, that does it for us at 5. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 o'clock. Have a great night, everybody. Celebrity Tastemakers with Lisa Mateo. That's coming up next. When you're New York's very own, this is the place for this amazing baseball. Does. Mets, Rockies. Pre game at 6.30, first pitch at 7. Tonight on PIX11. This summer, people are experiencing all the excitement Chevy has to offer. Oh boy. I'm looking straight up. Holy smokes. I can't tell I'm cold or anything. Wow, that's the jam right there. <laughs> go for thrilling drives and deals at the Chevy Summer Drive. I want to go to a Chevy dealership right when I get home. <laughs> it's the Chevy Summer Drive. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Cruze for around $169 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Every 30 seconds, a REMAX agent helps someone buy or sell a home. That means in the time it takes two teenagers to fall in love. This just happened. That's the sign of a REMAX agent. Pamper your feet with this at-home pedicure. I don't have time for that. My feet get so dry and cracked, I need serious relief. That's why I use O'Keeffe's for healthy feet. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked feet. Thanks to O'Keeffe's, I got my feet back. It's summer and time for Optimum's Red Hot Sale. Switch today and get 200 meg internet, unlimited home phone, and TV with over 260 channels for $69.99 a month for one year guaranteed. Plus, get Optimum Wi-Fi, multi-room DVR Plus for two years, and HBO and Showtime included for one year. All for $69.99 a month. Call 866-200-7024 to switch today. Or visit Optimum.com slash summer sale for special web-only offers like a reward card and free installation. Switch today. Are you ready to take the scenic routes? Then you belong at Bass Pro Shops for Freedom Days. With clearance savings of 20 to 40% on select shorts and shirts. And save $50 on this Eclipse Speed Frame tent. Hey, let's play Dare to Compare and see what $11.99 buys at my Bob's and what it buys at their store. Where's the bed? That's $20.97. How about the mirror and nightstand? That's a whopping $25.15. Now make your move, Bob. My Chatham bedroom with underbed storage is only $11.99 complete. So would you rather pay $11.99 for this or for this? Game over. Dare to Compare at Bob's Discount Furniture, in-store or at mybobs.com.